Hi, this is the very last of the Natalie dresses. Got a big rag at the waist and a different pocket. Again, you can make it out of any printed cotton. I'm using big rag at the waist. You can use on the inside, of course, a contrast fabric. And again, we're using the Babyville Boutique Fastness to close the dress. And what I've done here is I've used bias binding, ironed out one side to bring it actually onto the top of my bodice. So first of all, where I've ironed it flat, I stitch that into place. Then I stitch on the other side where I've got obviously the fold. And then the last time I go over, I just go through the middle and I've changed my color there to white. And then I've got a really nice finish at the top as well. And then you repeat that stage if you like on the back. So you've got a really nice front and back. Then we're going to put the lining and we're closing the armhole. I've got a centimeter seam allowance here, which is typically the first line next to your presser foot. For the shoulder strap, I'm using a pre ironed bit of bias binding which also got lace on the edge so that needs to be stitched down first and then I can insert it into the front and the back and the key to inserting these is to get them right into the edge and that means where the centimeter seam allowance would be because that's down so that it's right in the corner and it ends up sitting right in the edge when you're finished and you just sew across the top and you've got your pieces inserted. Then you do the side seam, so open out the whole lot and sew from one end to the other. And then you have closed your seams and the bodice is finished. Now we're going to do the pocket. You need any sort of elastic, slim elastic. I'm using an old knicker elastic and the Megan pocket, which I just cut straight up instead of round. Fold it in and in again, making sure that the width is correct for your elastic and then stitch along the edge, really close to the edge, just to hold it. And then we're going to take a safety pin, put the elastic on there and then go all the way through to the other side and pull. When you're happy with the amount that you've pulled, you cut off the elastic like that, and then you stitch it into place in two places. That's really important because it can slip out. I've had that, so do it in two places, then cut off the rest of the elastic. And we're now ready to bind it. So take some pre-prepared binding and fold it over with the longer side underneath it, obviously, and then we're going to bind it all the way around. You want to start um, sewing the binding together first for a centimeter or centimeter and a half. Here you can see it just disappearing out of sight. And then you just push in your pocket all the way around, stitching neatly close to the edge until you get to the other side. And again, you go over a one and a half to two centimeters, just whatever you feel comfortable with. And at this point I can cut them back and now all I need to do is turn them in. You could also put a bow on at this stage, I do it later. Place the pocket on the front where you want it to be, bearing in mind you have a pleat at the bottom. Here I use six inches and one and a half inches from the side. Position your pocket, pin it into place, tuck in the ends of your bias binding. And to position the other pocket, you just put it upside down on top and then fold over your fabric. And I've done this so many times now, but it is really the best way to do this. Pin it in really well, fold it back out and your pocket will be in perfect position. So all we have to do now is stitch around the pocket close to the edge. So come up the pocket first so that you're catching your bias binding which you've tucked in because you don't want that to be loose and then go across with a needle down turn and now you can go all the way around very close to the edge and I usually uh, never look at the needle you look at the plastic you can see there's what millimeter or millimeter and a half showing in that plastic that's what I'm looking at as I'm turning my pocket
So when you get to the end, do the same again, needle down, turn, and sew across, then turn again, and then sew down and secure. Now we've completed the pocket, we're going to do a French seam. So place the back behind it. We this time have the wrong sides on the inside and the right sides on the outside and you're stitching with half a presser foot width which is about four or five mil. Cut back the seam allowance to about two to three mil and then it looks like this and then you turn it and grab the seam and you sew it again now from the outside all the way down. And you can see it here this time I'm again lining it up with half the presser foot. You have to find this point actually where you're really familiar and comfortable with on your sewing machine. And the seam is as nice from the outside as it is from the inside. So Next we're going to put our gather threads into the skirt. So we've got one line presser foot width and the next one presser foot width next to that. Now we want to put on our ribbon. So the ribbon is going to roll to the outside like this. So you want to sew it on from the wrong side like this so that you just about catch it. You could do a centimetre of course but then you might have to cut it back. So I'm just catching a little bit and I go all the way around. I've changed my thread to red there and I tuck in the end and then I stitch across that and I tuck that in. Now that I've stitched this, you can see how easy that is to roll up, push it right down, and now we're going to do a second stitch and putting the ribbon on at the top. So you can see it here, so you roll it up and stitch all the way around again. Now with that done, we want to put our secondary pleat on and then also we're going to have the rig rack on there. So as with all the other dresses, you iron the three inches up, but this time, because I want to make sure that I get it right, I'm actually pinning just so it covers that ribbon. So if you have a slim ribbon, that's quite important. You pin it all the way around to the point that you want it to go to. And then you've got your rack which goes over the top, but it's going to be hard to keep it in the correct position. So if you turn it over and just do a stitching line on here, that could even be just a holding stitch, a really big one, it doesn't really matter. This stitch is just so that you know on the outside this is where I need to put my rack. And also you can get the pins out. So now I'm going to place my rack over the top and I now have a guideline so that I can say, okay, so there's my stitching line. I can follow that. Don't ask about the camera, I don't, don't know what it's doing. Anyway, just lift up your rig rack and then place it onto that stitching line until you get all the way around and your skirt's finished. Now you want to mark the centre of your bodice and if you watch really closely you can see me put on the skirt here on the wrong side. So if you're using the same fabric on the inside and the outside, be really careful. I had to unpick everything. So you want to distribute your gathers evenly across and pin them and then you're sewing right in the center of your two gather lines. So you can adjust them a little bit and you go over as well. It looks like this. And next I'm going to pull out all my gather threads, turn in my seam allowance here to the inside. And then I can put my rig rack over the top. So this is what you do. You just place that on and you can um, now go up and down, up and down as you like, like you can see me do here, or you can use a small zigzag and you just zigzag straight across it. And I've done that on this particular dress. You can see it when I show you from the inside. So it doesn't matter which way you want to do it. This is a small little zigzag. It both will look really nice. So 
so now we just have to put in the fastening so you've got your strip which you ironed over and you iron the sides in a centimeter and you start from the inside and then the fastening will roll to the outside so what you do is you put it into position it needs to be a centimeter longer so you've got a little bit at the top and then we're going to do a centimeter seam allowance all the way across to the other end so where the bodice ends you still have a centimeter seam allowance there you can see it but now as we go down to the tip the seam allowance gets less and less and less until it's about two minutes it's and until you sew with the upper share fabric being caught only two millimeters while i stick to my seam allowance that part now tapers down to two millimeters and you pin that really well there's no such thing as over pinning. You can see I've done that all the way to the end. And when that rolls over, it's going to finish off your dress really superbly. And then that's turned in and we've got a fastening in place. When you're sewing, line up the edge of the fabric with a one centimeter seam allowance and stick to that. Don't get confused just because your fabric layers now don't look like they match up on the side. I have people seen just try to keep to the seam allowance there and go further and further in. No, don't look at your needle. Just line it up with the side and go down. And when you get down to the point where you're just catching those two mil, you can either get your stitch length smaller, so you can go down to right to one, so make sure that it doesn't fray, or you go backwards and forwards. You can do both or just one of it. going over there really carefully yeah I like the reversing and I can make my stitch a bit bigger again as soon as I'm over it and I'm still on my centimeter seam allowance and now it'll taper back up to both shell and fabric um, to both the dress fabric and the um, fastening strip being one centimeter again so as I get to the top secure and the first step is done now because this might be really thick when you want to put your poppers in it's really important to cut this back at the top the bottom is not important the top is so now we can roll this over like this and in the olden days you just would have tucked this in and then you know turned this over and stitched it down maybe you've even done that but what we want to do is fold the seam allowance back so that both seam allowances literally sit on top of each other and sew across the top so that we get a really neat finish cut it back now and then we turn the seam allowances in neatly again you work out all your corners and use a pin for that or something tuck it in and look you've got a really superb looking finish here now it's very important that you just cover the stitching line so it's not even a millimeter it's just sitting right on top of that but you don't want it visible so you pin it all the way across And we're now stitching close to the edge all the way along. There we go. Keep lifting your pins out and you can see how the seam is just peeping out there. There we go, just covering it. And the nice thing about this is that if you have used um, a ribbon or the, the rick rack, it just covers it up doesn't it and it doesn't leave it thick because it's not going into a turn seam allowance but it's just going straight into the fastening and that makes it much less thick it's really nice so you go all the way up to the other side in. that's it secure could have done this better the camera was in the way <laughs> so now you fold this 
so they lie on top of each other and we're going to do a triangle at the lower end simply because that gives it more security and it just looks nice it keeps it in place better so it looks like this when it's done and we'll just stitch across all the way up excellent stuff so now it's done i want to put my poppers in now i will have tremendous problems if i'm using more than four layers to get the poppers in through the top and also it would look really stupid it's far too thick i've got my rig rack there so if you're in that position for your dress you just go through the um two layers on the inside so you don't go through the top layer you just put them on top of each other and you just put your tool through the other two layers of the fastening and you will put your poppers the baby bell snap poppers i'm using here so you put the lower end through and then you place the one with the larger rim over the top of that and you press it in and then you do the side that will fasten into that so again you have the flat part and then you take the other one over the top <clears throat> use your tool to press it in and then that will be shut and at this point obviously i could have then just stitched down um, on the red just to hold it in place there but i put all the poppers in and then stitched all the way along down to the bottom so that's that's also fine there's different methods and you just choose what suits you best so i'm just positioning my poppers where i want them I mark it with a pencil and then I go through with the tool. Now you can see me going really close to the edge there and that's probably because when I filmed this I was very ill. Um, it needs to be slightly more over. So I've put my poppers in and now to hold this all in place I'm just going to stitch down. I've used my zipper foot for this. Um, because I didn't want uh, the poppers to get into the way. So, but if you can move the needle over on your regular foot, this should also work. And I'm going down to where my rig rack is. When you do that, of course, it'll hold the top one in place better. Now I'm going to put a little bow on here, which I make out of bias binding. It's very, very simple. Two strips of bias binding like this, and they're three inches long. And what you want to do is fold them over so you've got the space there to do a seam and then once you've done that you can turn that and press it and now i can just gather it through the middle and put a um, button on which is actually really really easy to do so you just put a few running stitches in there pull the thread wrap it around and then attach your button over the top Yay! There we go. And you get a really nice cute bow shape. So I've put my button on and then I just stitch the whole lot through to the pocket which is again very nice as well. And that's about it. You've got a completed dress. Um, I hope that you've really enjoyed the series of the Natalie dresses and um, of course there are many more. You can visit my project page on froxandfrolics.com to find all the other videos that show you how to do the other dresses. So thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.